Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Recently, I have been working on many other kinds of stuff, such as the postgraduate school application and to prepare for the engine design project, which is needed for the graduation of my college school. For those who are new to my channel, I want to do a brief introduction about myself. Currently, I am a maritime student who major about the main engine design mainly about the heat transfer and the combustion process in diesel engines. Of course, including the fuel injection system, which I have a great passion on. Besides, I love high power RF, plasma, and also go sightseeing in tropic places. Okay, without talking too much, let's take a look at this newly designed RF amplifier. For those who are familiar with RF amplifiers, this one seems to be an UHF amplifier. Yeah, this one is a class E short band amplifier which utilizes a BLF 188XR MOSFET. LDMOS. Sorry. The operation frequency is 352 megahertz and the CW continuous wave power output is 1.4 kilowatts. The post power output is 1.6 kilowatt for 20 milliseconds and no more than 17 pulses per second. That's due to the instant heat dissipation. The efficiency is around 71% at 1.4 kilowatt output and the gain at this point is around 18 dB, which means I need around 15 to 17 watts of input power to reach the maximum power output. So during the test, I borrowed two pre-amplifiers from, from the school lab to drive this amplifier. With 0.2 amps IDQ and 50 volt strain supply at 1 kV output power, the second harmonic is minus 25 dB less and the fifth harmonic is more than minus 60 dB less. This amplifier could be used for many different applications, for example, plasma etching, coating. However, this amplifier is mainly designed for cyclotron usage. That's why the frequency is very strange, 352 megahertz. That's for the resonance in the cavity. Several friends from Chiang Mai University contacted me and told me that they have a cyclotron project and so they need a 20 kilowatt post RF supply at 352 megahertz and uh, I designed this uh, pallet amplifier for them it's very heavy uh, mainly because uh, let me turn on the light mainly because this 12 millimeter thick Hopper, ho copper heat spreader that's very heavy uh, it weighs around maybe 3 kilograms uh, that's for better heat dissipation ability uh, so I fabricated this amplifier I designed the PCB board which you could see here I still have many same PCB boards left uh, this amplifier is the first pallet amplifier which utilizes the LD MOSFET during all the amplifiers I have made. Um, the PCB board is made by a company and uses used Teflon material. 0.76 mm thick and uh, one micrometer gold plated. Uh, the back side is used as a ground plane. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Here is the input side, the matching network, input side of the LDMOS, the output drain, drain bias or the drain supply, matching DC blocking and to the output, a class E amplifier, which utilizes this micro strip matching. Also, 
here is a gate by a supply connected to here. Uh, if you look closely, here is a tiny resistor. That's for eliminate the instability during low, low, very low load condition. Uh, at first, I didn't use use this resistor, and the amplifier starts oscillate at very low power when. Uh, you first increase the power operating at very high power and then reduce the power. It will go into oscillation if uh, I don't use this resistor. That might come from the coupling from the output to the gate bias line. I guess, only my guess. But anyway, this resistor eliminates that problem. Also, those ceramic capacitors are all from ATC, Telecom Communication Ceramic Capacitors, type number 800B. Uh, I used one 47 picofarad capacitor, also ATC 800B type, here previously, and it got overheat. So this time I change the 47 picofarad capacitor and um, split it into three 15 picofarad ATC 800 type capacitors. Uh, so uh, the capacitance is reduced by two picofarads, but uh, there seems very little influence. This is only a very brief introduction of the amplifier. Uh, this video is not uh, short to teach you how to design or build this amplifier. Uh, I can show you some simulation results uh, during the design process. And uh, this, oh, oh, that picture just disappeared. I don't know why. Uh, this is a ARM simulation during the design process. So uh, maybe that's enough for today's video and thanks for watching.